part of those, and then what we want is you know that the predictions for those countries essentially show you the right the right ranking. But the in the training data, um, I mean potentially you have some sentences are saying over sixty million people, right? Or yeah. or you know dozens of millions or something like this. But uh, uh, but is the this sort of the uh, error the error driven by those kind of things more, or are there also, or is it more just misinterpretation of the training data, like um, where you, you know, it, as language tends to do, it just sucks in something completely wrong, like millions of tourists visit Italy every year, or 10 million tourists visit every yeah. Italy every year, and then it has 10 in there, and that's getting into the average. Well, you know, so the so the funny thing is, and, and I'm, I mean, I'm going to come to that in, in, in much more detail in a couple of minutes, but is that, for, that even, the, even if we learn to predict numbers, the numbers in the input text don't, um, don't matter that much. I mean, we, we, did not, we did not actually try this, but my, my, uh, here's a hypothesis. If you took your, the corpus that you start with um, and you just you know, replace all the number expressions just by some kind of a placeholder, just by, or just delete them outright, I would I would guess that the that the performance of the model doesn't doesn't change a lot. So what it actually does is that it learns more typical properties of large countries, for example, versus typical properties of small countries. But that means that you have a ground truth. Uh, that is that you you've already told it. Oh, this is the these are the populations of Spain and Portugal, and then it predicts Italy. Right. It's supervised learning. Yes. Okay. okay. So we don't need essentially the the. the it, it's supervised within each attribute. So we need some instances, for example, countries with their values for each attribute, but we do not then need um, the, uh, you know, we just need, you know, like observations, textual observations of, of that country then. Thank you, one question? Well, essentially, essentially, because um, I mean, I've, I was going to come to this, I think, on the next slide or on the slide afterwards. We have two kinds of attributes: we have numeric attributes, and we have um, uh, categorical attributes like form of government, which we binarize. So then we have binary attributes there, and we um, and we just wanted, you know, like one model that we could just so plug just everything in. No, we just normalize them, you know, to, to, we just, you know, center them, center them, and, and just, you know, use uh, them back to yeah, the Yeah, the second question I had that um, I didn't quite understand the part, um, you mentioned that you had specific examples for each uh, attribute that you wanted to predict, mm -hmm. and uh, so you were predicting on textual samples that contained sentences like Italy's population, or you were predicting that from general, any text? Okay, um, maybe at this point, or maybe just hold that thought, and, and in two or three slides, I may go over to the to the board and you know just just put put down like a structure of, of what the setup looks like. Okay, question. So people in Freebase are very, are very interested um, in, in something like this, right? So I mean, it's a it's a collaborative it's a collaborative. Um, you, you don't have uh, enough information to predict something, and the hard predictor looks about about what on this term. So no, I mean, if you have a collaborative resource like Wikipedia, Freebase, something like this, right? Okay. I mean, for example, the the country size you have for every country. That's one of the first things that people list for a country, right? Mm -hmm. But, I mean, essentially it's as usual, it's a zip distribution. So you have attributes that you have for every country, but for almost all attributes you just have missing values for, for, for many countries, right? Can you talk about how to predict the missing values of yes. something? Okay. For many, many, many uh, I mean, entity types and right. many values. Okay, so um, we did we did an experiment with the with the deep learning model here, um, 
uh, which, which we thought would, would do better because it does allow uh, the one to jointly learn, learn attributes, but the results actually turned out not to be, not to be better than for the simple just regression model, but we are still investigating why that, why that, is, uh, why that is the case. Okay. <clears throat> so, um, okay, pre-processing, I already mentioned this, so we, uh, we normalize numeric attributes, we, we binarize categorical attributes, and we remove attributes that occur uh, very infrequently. And then, and maybe this then is, or maybe the next slide is the one where I should then, then just give you, give you an idea. So essentially, the way it looks like <coughs> is that you have, for example, you can think of this as a, as a simple table. For example, this is the population table from Freebase, okay? And then you say, okay, here is here are my training examples, so I treat them I treat them as seen, okay, and so here here are my my testing examples where I assume that I do not. So this is here, for example, a country. And here is the value. So here the values are unseen in the test set. So what you do is you you use your you use your training examples to train your logistic regression model, and these, is there another pen maybe? This one is just giving up already. Okay. On the table. Oh, 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 sorry. Yeah. So the input here, or the output rather of the logistic regression model is the value that we get from the population table and the input here is is essentially the the vector that that we got from a from a large from a large corpus the, the Google News corpus where they uh, collected some some billions of tokens of, of English news so this is a how many 1000 dimensional dimensional vector and you you use this to, to predict the to predict the values, and then essentially you take that model to, in order to make new predictions. Again, what you do is for the input, you get the uh, you get the, the distributional vector from the Google News corpus, and you essentially reuse the the learned weights in order to predict predict a new value. Okay. Essentially, is this like maximum likelihood encoding, or what you do? Kind of, so, because you, if you want to predict, because you have many possibilities, you choose the one which is most likely, right? It's it's maximum likelihood, yes, yes. Okay, <clears throat> and so we looked on on a couple of of domains, and and I'm going to concentrate on a couple of, of those here, uh, so countries, animals, and, and employers, um, and, uh, and so in evaluation, we, we uh, uh, for evaluation, I mean, we always now have to kind of distinguish between the numeric attributes and the binary attributes, so for the numeric attributes, as I said before, we use uh, a rank correlation coefficient, so we are asking, is the is the essentially the ranking um, that's uh, induced on the on the entities by the by the attribute is that correctly predicted by the by the model um, and for the binary attributes I mean we just predict accuracy and then I mean in terms of baselines that you should compare against for numeric attributes um, what you uh, what you can do is I mean this is a very stupid baseline, so there is a mean feature value from the training set, and in terms of the binary attributes, you can do a majority class classification. And so the upper bound would be a model that, you know, where, where you, where you use, uh, where you essentially give it the, give it the free base vectors as the input, so, 
um, you already give it the, you don't use the distributional vectors here as the input, but really the, um, the, the, the vectors from the attribute, the actual referential attribute vectors from the, from the knowledge base. Um, so in principle, the model should be able to learn the task perfectly, but, but as a matter of fact, it, it doesn't do that. <coughs> so, so here are a couple of, of results. If we first look at the at the binary attributes, you see that the that the baseline here is, is is very high in particular for for employers. I mean, because when we have when we have categorical categorical attributes with, with many values, we get lots of binary attributes with all, all, all almost all of which are are false. Um, and uh, and so we have in the, in the meantime uh, done some work on. Um, on changing the changing the encoding of the of the of the features there, um, but uh, but these are the kind of stable numbers that I wanted to show. Then our own model here um, you know, improves over the baseline. Of course, it doesn't quite quite reach the the upper bound, which is here at, at almost mm -hmm. one. You binary? What do you mean binary? It's like a zero one. Uh, it's accuracy binary. Why do you call it binary? I mean, we're doing logistic regression, okay? And so we, we, we in the case of binary attributes, we interpret the output of the regression as a probability of the feature being true. Yeah? So it's 0, 86 means uh, hmm? the probability is 0, 86, 86 is This means that, that the majority class is false, and it, it holds true for 86% of our labeling. Yes, yes. I mean, that's a binary classification task if you want, right? With a logistic regression model, okay? Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> and uh, if we move to the, um, to the numeric features, then, um, then uh, what you see here is that the, that the baseline is, is lower. I mean, overall, I guess it's a, it's a more difficult task. Um, but we do get we do get a substantial improvement here over